Hello, and welcome to another episode of Lemur's Corner. I am Lemur, and today we are going to be talking about a game called Flowscape. Uh, I've actually been using this game for quite a bit now, uh, and I've actually talked to the developer uh, a little bit outside of that. Uh, but I wanted to introduce it to you guys now because uh, we have a couple extra things going on, and we'll talk about that in the middle of the video. Uh, but we are be using it for a new D&D channel that we have going, and you can check that description down below. Uh, you can get this game on both Steam uh, or on Steam, uh, and you can go ahead and grab that link also down below. Uh, but Flowscape is basically, I, I would say it's it's a multi-tiered uh, thing that you can use. One, it's a calming game that you can just relax and, and enjoy the ambiance of it and build whatever you want. Uh, the second is for uh, board games and, and Dungeons and & Dragons and cool videos and pictures and stuff like that. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to jump into the game really quick and take a look at it uh, and really talk about more what it is. Uh, and then I'll go through some pros and cons and give you my overall feels on it, uh, including a quick little uh, lemur rating at the end of the video um, and give you my opinion of the whole game overall. So here we are entering into the initial world. You can see it's going to auto-populate something when you first enter any type of world that uh, does react reality. Uh, it's procedurally generated. You can see you get trees, bushes, all kinds of fun stuff, animals, um, and all kinds of fun things. But you can see there's a lot of detail in this. There's beautiful water ripples. You have birds that fly in the air. You can change the sun, all kinds of stuff. There's, so you pretty much can do whatever you want on these. Uh, but what we're going to do uh, is give you the basic idea. I'm not going to go fully into a tutorial or anything crazy like that uh, and really give you an idea of what everything looks like. For that, uh, I am actually going to load a pre-built world. So here we are in a small little kind of uh, hillside castle that I built here. Uh, and basically... What, it's, what I'm going to do is try to explain this a little bit more to uh, everyone and what you can do. Uh, we have some basics in here. You can see this is not overly decorated. Um, I did decorate one little section just to show you how you can layer things. But let's go ahead and jump out here to an open piece of terrain uh, and just talk about what the options you have are. So you have two things. One is you can do trees. You can see all these access to trees that you have. Different types, different things. You click on them, and then you can see this bubble form. So you can make the bubble bigger. You can make the bubble smaller. You can change the tilt of the trees. You can make the trees bigger, smaller, uh, or varying in size. I'm sorry, the variance in size for the trees. Uh, you can make it bigger, smaller. Uh, it's just a blast. So like you can see, I told, and boom, we get trees that pop up really quick. Uh, and then, of course, you can undo that and say you don't want it. So you can also do sparsity. So if I just want to do one, I click it and I get one tree that I want and where I want it. Uh, and if I want to add some plants, I just click on a plant. So let's just go with uh, some little shrubs here, drop those around really quick. They're just one a piece. Boom, we got some shrubs. And let's just do some grass really quick just to make it look nice. But you can see you pretty much make what you want. Uh, on top of it, you can do what's called dropping. Um, this just allows it to do it. So like, let's say I want to add some rocks. Uh, I could just click it and you see they drop down and it allows them to like kind of stack up and, and fall with the terrain as they naturally would. Or you can do them where they fix to the terrain uh, and then they just kind of grow out of nowhere. Uh, we're going to turn up the sporacity though uh, so we can see that. On top of it, if you wanted to, you can make it where these rocks, uh, we'll just go ahead and do a small example for it. Um, you can see there's certain sections on here where I can say I don't want that to highlight on there. So I'm just going to build directly on the ground. It won't stack up and they won't stack. And then if I wanted to, I can make it where they stack up on the rocks even. So they'll just keep growing and growing over and over and get taller and taller and allow me to make a big rock pile uh, that looks much more... Uh, depth uh, and managed uh, and as I said yeah, I can just keep clicking this and holding it and this rock pile will literally just keep growing and growing and growing uh, so it's, it's a really cool feature that this allows you to dynamically do what you want um, there's all kinds of buildings that are preloaded in here uh, all kinds of different items so like I can just put a building in here you can see that I can change the size of it right here all of it's able to be accessed pretty much from your mouse and keyboard you almost don't even need to click uh, all these scales up top, a lot of them are on here. You have screenshots you can take, uh, but you can see there's all kinds of different dynamic features, uh, including a big dragon if you really wanted to. Uh, you can make a big, huge dragon if you really wanted to have that happen. Uh, and then let's say I don't like the way it's facing, so I can just move it. Grab this little dragon right here and just say, hey, I want to face you this way. 
Uh, I'm going to rock you back a little bit, and there it is. So you get the dynamics to whatever you want. And if I say, well, I don't want that dragon anymore, I can just grab this little eraser, and boom, the dragon's gone. It's a very, <laughs> very easy and user-friendly option. Uh, there is a full tutorial. So you can hit the little question mark here, and it shows you all the options you have, miscellaneous keys, talks about sculpting terrain and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I do find the terrain being a little bit difficult sometimes uh, if you're trying to fine tune the terrain. So if I go into this fine tune terrain, I click sculpt, right? And if I go to a small brush size like this, I just wanna show you really quick uh, and then start doing it, it gets really spiky. And then if, oh no, I didn't wanna do that. Um, I can't just fix it. You know what I mean? I can't, like, I can try to fix it this way, but then it gets bigger, and you're kind of in a bad spot at that point. Uh, it's trying to fix that one dynamic point that you have to find, and then you click it, and then and then it just gets a little... It, it just is very... If you get very fine-tuned in the sculpting, it's one thing I don't necessarily enjoy about it, but it's overall, it's very good. Um, that's more just don't do that. <laughs> don't do a single layer of sculpting like that, unless you want that small divot like you see here, uh, just for dynamic purposes. Um, you have different worlds you can select. So I can just go ahead and select this world, for example, um, and I can change the map here. You can just pick what you want. You can change the, the terrain type uh, in here in the different grounds and the riverbeds. Uh, you can do a sea turtle if you wanted to have one. You could do uh, kind of a circular globe type thing, a book, a little island that's floating, kind of like a... Um, avatar floating mountains kind of situation uh, you can even randomize it if you really want to and see what ends up coming uh, on top of that you have access to outside things so i could do like a ocean situation where i'm looking out and it's the whole ocean you can hear the waves uh, uh going through and you can make it choppier you can add more foam if you wanted to add more reflection change everything. As I said, this is fully up to you and the access you want to do it. On top of it, I can change the scenery we're looking at so I can have a beautiful sunset with some uh, islands off in the distance. So it looks like we're kind of more on a small island here. Uh, if we go ahead and switch back to this really quick, you can kind of feel like, oh, look, I'm on a small island looking out over here. Uh, let's say I've got the sun and I'm just not liking where the sun's at right now. I can just move it, change the sun and moon direction, change where it's at, but this is part of that background we talked about here. So I cannot change that background unless I change backgrounds. Uh, so you can see that sun goes there. Uh, let's maybe I want to go maybe more dark at the night. You got the moon showing, or let's say we just want to do a starry night out here. And there's that. So then we'll jump over and you can see move the sky where you want it to, to give you the proper look. Uh, and let's say we're just going to go ahead and say sun and moon. That's probably the sun up right now. So we want to turn down the lens flare and the intensity of the sun, you can see it moving right there. Uh, the height of it is gonna go up there. So it looks straight up uh, and do all kinds of fun stuff. As I said, this is literally up to you. You can have different dynamics in here. So if I wanted to turn on bugs, I could turn on bugs. I can have a water running in the background. Let's go ahead and turn the ocean off really quick just to, so we don't have that going in the background. Uh, and so it can be very soothing. Um, you can turn on the river has some lightning going with a little bit of rain uh, and just build the world that you want to build. Uh, do what you want, make what you want um, and really have an opportunity to check some things out um, and really just create what you want. So we loaded back into the world that I had initially started with before I started messing with it. Uh, I wanted to show you a couple more things that you can do with this, uh, which is it's very popular with uh, the Dungeons and Dragons community, specifically for the ability to uh, go in here and you click on map, uh, and then you can go ahead and hit ortho, and this puts you on an overhead image. So you can actually put squares to this to make it a D&D map, uh, hexagons if you're doing uh, something else, um, and really go crazy with what you're doing on here. You can change it. You can load it directly to Ark and Forge. Uh, you can rotate the map if you don't like the way it's facing. Uh, it's completely up to you how you do it. You can even uh, make the four times I, I clicked it by accident, uh, but you can take screenshots of it. Uh, you can add the grids, and let's say we want those a little bit bigger or smaller. Maybe you have more squares, maybe you have less squares. It's completely up to you how that looks and how you break it out. Uh, and then you can take a picture and then just upload it to whatever site you're using. 
um, or whatever you're using specifically for that. Or if you want to have it as an open one, you can just do it like this and have it as a terrain map and then add your own terrain. Uh, it's definitely an option on here too. It's really a nifty little trick that you can do on this. But as I said, there is so much you can do on here. It's it's unreal. Uh, you can make great cinematics. You could just take a grid background picture. Like, you know, I could go right here and be like, okay, I'm just going to take a picture of this. And that's just going to be the thumbnail. So that's literally going to be the thumbnail that everyone just saw was the one I took, and you should notice it is, uh, for this. Uh, and you can just do whatever you want. Put it as wallpaper, whatever you want to do. Uh, it allows for all those dynamics. Uh, on top of it, you can add snow if you want to uh, and make it snow. As I said, it's it's a very dynamic game that allows you to do whatever you want, uh, including import images. So that was the one thing I did forget to uh, mention. Uh, you can click import um, and import something through the mesh, um, and then it uh, asks you to download it. So I'm just going to download something really quick, um, and it's going to take a second to load, and then it's probably below the world, if I had to guess, uh, where that import image is. So it's gonna, you can see it kind of lag out here for a second because it's probably pretty big or it's so big that it's messing out the world. Uh, your frames are tracked in the top left up here. You can see I'm kind of lagged out right now for the frames, there it is. So you can see it's loading in right now. And we'll give it a minute to finish loading in here um, and gets your frames to recover. Um, you can go out and build your own 3D images through some programs if you know how to do that kind of stuff. Uh, if you don't, uh, you can you know downsize this. So like if I don't like how big this is, um, I can just kind of shrink it down like, hey, I don't want that, that to be that big. Uh, maybe I want to move it here really quick and bring it up a little bit higher so I can have this cool image here. And we're just going to pull it off really quick. So, like, you can import this stuff. Someone built this uh, down below, uh, um, and someone built this from scratch on a 3D option, um, something really cool that they put in, and you can import all this stuff. Uh, you can also delete it if you don't want it anymore, uh, but there are natural ones that come with the game, uh, and eventually there's actually going to be coming out soon, I will link to the video down below describing what's coming out next, a actual grid-by-grid -grid dungeon crafter uh, that's going to be coming out for the game um, eventually, and it's really exciting to see that uh, and see it square-by-square square coming out. So. Um, Overall, I think it's a, a great option. It's a very relaxing. When I find myself building D&D &D worlds on here, um, I do see myself kind of fading out a little bit uh, and fading and going, getting tired. Uh, so it is nice in that aspect if you're a big gamer or anything like that. Uh, but out of that, I would definitely give it at a 5 out of 5. Other than those small little problems, uh, I'm not going to give it less than a 5 out of 5 lemurs. Uh, it's a great game. I highly recommend it. I'll link to it down below. Uh, but that's really going to do it for this episode, guys. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you've played Flowscape, uh, let us know what you think about it down below. If you haven't, if you have any questions, also let us know down below in those comments. Uh, but as always, I hope you have a fantastic day. And we see you on the next episode of Lemur's Corner.